Let's interpret the domain types of real-world functions. Problem number one. Tickets to the theater are $5 each. Select the graph that represents the total cost as a function of total tickets sold. Step one. Evaluate the graphs, including their domains. Graph A and B have some similarities. They both are called the total cost graph. The input value is tickets and the output value is cost in terms of dollars. The domain of graph A is all values from 0 through 10, and we know this because we have a straight line. This straight line is telling us that there is an output value for every input value, not just at the whole numbers like 1 and 2, but at 1 half and 1 and a half and 1.05. Any value between 0 through 10 is in the domain with this graph. The domain of graph B is not continuous, it is a set of individual values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and no values in between are allowed in this domain. How did we evaluate the domains of the graph? We evaluated the domains of the graph by using the graph line or graph dots to tell us whether the domain was a continuous interval or a set of individual values. Step 2. Select the graph that represents the function. Using what I know about the real world context, tickets being sold are going to be sold in whole number quantities only, like 1, 2, and 3. Graph A allows parts of tickets to be sold, so this cannot be our function graph. The function graph is B. Graph B represents the total cost as a function of tickets sold. I know because the domain for buying tickets is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. We cannot buy half a ticket, so in between values, like 1 and a half, 2 and a half, are not in the function. You are now ready to interpret the domain type of the real-world function in problem number two.